But anyways, so the problem with Trapper is he starts off with one trap in hand, and his traps are scattered throughout the map, which makes it, makes it that he has to go hunt down these traps and put them in his pocket and to relocate them. What needs to happen is, with Trapper, I think his count should be a flat out, he can hold three traps, and his add-ons make it increase up to, like, what, I think he has three bags? Uh, four bags or three bags? So, let's see. Add-ons, add-ons, add-ons. So, he has a, a, a brown bag. Start off with an extra trap, and you can carry two traps. This one is start off with an extra trap, but carry three traps. So, this one is start off with two, carry two. Start off with two, carry three. Then he has a purple bag. Start off with three, carry three. Really? That's all it is? Three is his max? Ugh. So this one needs to happen with Trapper, in my personal opinion. And a lot of his add-ons are bullshit. You're only really using the ones that uh, either affect the traps. Oh, well, that needs to change, too. The, the, tra the trap's brightness... And the, if the traps do something, if they're either uh, rescues or if they're just set. But anyways. But as the trapper himself, his power, he needs to be able to just hold three. And then let it be the max that he holds is five. And with the add-ons doing that, one, one that makes him start off with uh, two holds four. You know, that would be fine in my personal opinion. Then on the off chance that like okay so say for instance um, you set a, you in the beginning of the match you set up an area with all these traps the survivors get the gen done in that particular area so but now they still got gens to work on other areas so now you say you got one two or even three traps around this gen this dead zone so now those traps are useless to you and so the survivor the killer trapper has to walk over there pick these up. Walk to where he wants to relocate them, and if he's not carrying a bag, do it however many times he can hold them. So what to, I would say to change for Trapper, and this is from what I've seen them do with the game, they need to make it to where he does like what Freddy does with generators. Looks at a gener looks at a bear trap, an icon pops up, which bear trap you're looking at, and to do a recall. It takes him also out of the I'm just a psychopath with a big ass knife category and makes him more supernatural, makes him much more of a threat and puts him in the category of fucking relevancy because he is irrelevant as hell right now. This guy, I think, is one of the, is, is not even played as much anymore. I mean, he's he has a strong game if you're able to get his traps around the basement in and around the basement and whatnot. If you do basement trapper, oh, he's a threat and a half. But what's when the survivors, say the instance, the survivors do what they, they work together and get the survivors out of the basement and then move on to get their gens done. Now all these goddamn traps are scattered around the basement and the trapper can't, has to do this slow process of carrying all his traps. So it would make it so much better if he started off carrying it, being able to carry more than just one trap default wise and has the ability to recall and mind you give it a goddamn cooldown if you did that give the recall a cooldown that would be that would be totally understandable because if he's just like recall 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 i got three traps in my hand now because i'm an asshole and then that's what the add-ons could do the add-ons could affect the cooldown of trap recall um you know like like right, right here uh because simply increases bear trap disarm time that would that would mean that if I'm not in a chase, that they they have all the free time any goddamn ways. But if they're in a chase, they're not gonna go near my damn trap. So, <laughs> like yeah, these uh, affect the the time it takes to disarm a bear trap, and like they're reworking it to where he's also getting like a, a tweak. He's not getting a rework. He's getting a tweak to where it used to be like a. Uh, Survivors would always get would get, have a great chance of getting out on first attempt of escaping a bear trap, which is bullshit. Now they've increased it to where like it's less likely to happen at one on your first try, but you're guaranteed to get out on your sixth try. How about this? Get rid of the RNG. 
Make it like a progression bar. Make it to where like it's uh, what uh, what killer is it? They have like a progression bar. Like fuck the pig skill box chat. Yeah, you can put skill checks on getting out of a bear trap. Do it like that. I'm sure it's not that hard. I'm sure you can go ahead and put a progression bar on an escape for a bear trap rather than it rely on RNG. I mean, hell, there's a goddamn progression bar any goddamn ways on the attempt. Get rid of it. <laughs> Get rid of the RNG. RNG is not a skill. Luck is not a skill. Stop putting RNG in skill-based games. God damn it. <laughs> So that's what I suggest. Change to where the trap is in RNG. Change to where he starts off being able to carry three traps and have the ability to recall traps to make him a much more f faster killer. Because the, the name of the game is Speed. And Trapper is ability makes him so slow. Eh, said my piece. If I forgot anything, cover it later in life. Wraith. Wraith is all around good. I liked him. For a good amount of time, the uh, the silent bell mixed with uh, not not that add on the all seeing one makes him a real threat. Uh, hell, even um, this one, bone clapper, makes him a real threat with uh, all seeing. Windstorm itself, I feel that could be like a kind of a default thing that can be buffed up a little bit more because when he's cloaked or uncloaked, his walking speed is the goddamn same. And then when you decloak, he slows down or he can't do anything. And he's obvious as hell. So, I mean, all I can really say about Wraith is the fact that, yeah, he just needs to be a little bit more faster um, and more quiet. He, he is getting a tweak, too. Uh, his cloaking gives off, like, the Predator silhouette, the, the Predator's invisibility silhouette, where you can see the outlines of the body, but it's, like, like warped, like the image is warped. They're getting rid of that to, like, if you if he's far away. If he's up close on you, it's still like the Predator silhouette. But, you know, uh, that's fine. But, like, his all-around speed and his, his usefulness, uh, it just needs, like, yeah, a lot of his add-ons, like, oh, let's see, what does his add-ons do? All-seeing spirit. Uh, a content creator made this, did a build with this and proved that it does have some uses, uh, especially with Ruin. And the way how a lot of these survivors just ignore totems for if they're you know if the totem is hidden and not in the obvious just out in the obvious open. Uh, let's see, like I said, silent clapper. Oh, it's totally good. Uh, all scene. Uh, Shadow dance. Shadow dance actually has some good uses. I I, I partnered Shadow dance up with. Uh, oh, what is this one? Yeah. The race uncloaks completely when breaking pallets or damaging generators while cloaked. So you do it hella fast. You do, you do the break of the animation really fast. Then you come out uncloaked, and then you're on the survivor's ass. Rather, it's they, they threw a pallet down while you're invisible, or they're running from a generator, and you're invisible. And so, yeah, I, I, I believe, yeah, Shadow Dance has some synergy with that brown add-on. The race reappearance time. The amount of time... Like I said, it's just considerably, but the amount of time considerably reduces is like to be determined. It's like, I think it's like one second. Now, don't get me wrong. In this type of game style, one second can mean a lot. It can make or break a lot of situations. But <laughs> I feel that as this being a purple add-on, and if you did it to a green, the green version, and there's not really that much of a difference, then, then what the fuck is the, 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 the point of the purple add-on then? The purple add-on is supposed to be, you know, it has major impact on what it's affecting, not slight impact. <laughs> All right, tr yeah, tremendously increases the race movement speed while cloaked, slightly decreases the movement speed while uncloaking. Not a bad add-on. So for the race all around, there's nothing I could think of that they need to do because problematically the only thing that is the problem with Wraith is his cloaking speed. And they have add-ons to adjust an effect that maybe just tweak the numbers on what it does and doesn't affect. So, he's fine. Billy! Billy, Billy, Billy. He just got reworked like a couple months ago. He got new chase music. His power was tweak to where now his chainsaw can overheat uh, he he they nerfed him it was considered a nerf but you know like what, what can i say about billy like the the one thing that they did the the the, the insta saw billy which was a big threat uh which was like a yellow and a brown and on i think or a, 
like yellow. You know, it was green at the time. Tubering, uh, tuned carburetor or tubular guide, some shit like that. I, I can't remember what the name the name of the add on was back then, but um, yeah, it was a green and a yellow add on that made him one of the most dangerous killers in the game. Well, they got rid of it. <laughs> <laughs> they got rid of it all together. Like, all his cooldown um, to make his chainsaw faster, I think, falls into the category of... Yeah, it's faster now, but Billy all around, his base movement speed is slowed down by, like, I think it's like 10% or some shit like that. But, yeah, no, like... Uh, I can't say nothing much about reworking or doing what they need to change the Billy because they just fucking changed him. Uh, I, I would really like it if they made Instasaw much more of a thing... Um, you know, the chains. I really like the low low pro chains. That re it really catches survivors off guard every time I use it. I love it. I love that. That makes him really good. Uh, the brick and the muffler both have to do with uh making Billy much more quiet. But like, I forget if muffler synergizes with Tinker. But yeah, like, there's nothing I can say about that with him. Nurse, they reworked Nurse, uh, what, last year or a year or two ago? Where they made it to where there's a, a cooldown on her blink. But it's so minuscule. <laughs> like, did you even change anything about her? Like, she could still blink as fast as she wants to. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh. But yeah, I don't like Nurse because, of, like I said, her ability breaks the rules of the game. It makes it too easy. And um, I, I don't like her. But she's definitely an answer to the the, the PC, the high-ranked PC players that play with these, you know, these tweaks to their game to where they run faster. Their hitboxes are not where they say they are. Or, you know, they heal faster, move faster. Nurse stops all that bull. But like I said, she just got reworked. I, I And I'm not a big fan of her. Hag, Hag is perfect in my personal opinion in design. Like the, the, the her ability makes her good, but there are counters to her ability, which being that if you crouch walk, her ability is just null and void, and if you have a flashlight, destroys them. I mean, yeah, it means that you know survivors have to use a flashlight, but flashlights appear in boxes all the goddamn time. And if you're going up against survivor friends, well, this especially at the rank that I'm in, ninety percent of your matches are going to be surviving with friends. Um, they'll always communicate. I have a flashlight. And this is that, and then all her add-ons and abilities ha have significant value. Every single one. A lot of people don't like scarred hand with uh, the waterlogged shoe. I think it's actually good. This has actually won me uh, quite a few games because of the body block, body blocking hag. Oh, it's so good. Mitt rag hag. I'm still kind of iffy on because that that just makes her have omnipresence. And I'll be honest with you, I I don't think that 50 second cooldown is even a thing. I feel like I could teleport to a, a trap all the way on one side of the map and then do do it again almost immediately. It feels like that. And then, yeah, and if you do mint rag with shackles, oh, oh, they don't even know you're coming. Oh, <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> yeah, mint rag with shackles or just rusty shackles in general. Rusty shackles, her best add-on. Uh, who do we have here? Doctor, Doctor Sayers, Doctor Sayers. There's two ways you can play Doctor. He's been reworked. Um, you could either play him um, big ass terror radius, which uh, implies you're playing an impossible skills check, or you can play him as you know the, the designs. You know, you you throw on King and a high stimulus electrode, like you keep the shit out of everybody to the point to where they can't even work on gens. It's, he slows the game down naturally with his ability, so you don't even have to run Ruin with him because of how good King and uh, Electrode is. I mean, you can run uh, not even so much King. King is just because it does so much. Like, look how look at the description on it. Look at the, the, the not even the flavor text. Just look at what it does. It does everything. <laughs> That the doctor can uh, that can do with other add-ons. It's the, that's how that is the epitome of what a red add-on should do. But anyways, but yeah, like iridescent king with electrode makes it like that. That's base level of I'm a dangerous doctor to deal with. 
Then if you do the impossible skill chest, which is like using one of his add-ons that increases his... I, I used them all up because I was using that. But it's much like... Uh, where is it? This one. It's Calm. Calm Class 3 or what? Carter's Notes or whatever the hell it is. Yeah. You make your terrorists gigantic as fuck. Then that way they... Survivors really don't get a good sense of where you are because your terror radius is so large. And then you have them under the effects of a nerving presence, I think it was. Let me see. I think it was a nerving presence. Yeah, a nerving presence makes their skill chances happen more frequently and reduces their skill check size by 60%. And then if you team that up with Lullaby, ah! <laughs> yeah, skill checks doctor and, you know, basic bitch doctor. They're okay. Huntress! She's, I know she's getting reworked soon because the community has complained so much about her one red add-on. And her one red add-on does make her one of the most dangerous killers in the game. And what it does is that one hatchet throw is all you need to put a survivor down. Not two! Not not a wombo combo. Hit him with a hatchet. Hit him with an axe. Uh, no, no, just one. Yeah, nobody. Even I, to an extent, don't like. That's why I have twenty three of them. I don't really use it that often. If anything, I think what the most dangerous uh, add on Huntress has access to is this shit right here. Beer is toxin. It's an exhaustion at, um uh, uh, affliction. Anything that deals with exhaustion, I love. And then just, you know, all the things that affect, like, her throwing speed, how many hatches she can carry, those are all fine and dandy. Um, Deer Skin Glow could be used to rework because, well, I don't know if it needs to be reworked, because it's just Iron Maiden. You either run Iron Maiden or you run the gloves. If you want to get rid of, if you want to run a, a fourth perk to replace Iron Maiden, you put on Deer Gloves, but then you, you're losing out on that add-on, so, you know. So you can do, like, gloves, beer is toxic, and then replace Iron Maiden with something else. But at the same time, too, you know, no one's going to run it. That's the thing about lockers, too. Only Doctor, and if they suspect you have barbecue and chili, will make a survivor use a locker. Survivors would rather run the risk of hiding behind a rock using urban evasion as opposed to using the effectiveness of lockers. So, but yeah, but Huntress... There's nothing I could say about her design other than she was the first, like, long-range killer, I think, to be released in the game. And when Iridescent Head came out, like, yeah, the downside is, oh, I use this that one-shot survivors, uh, but I only have one. Then here comes Infantry Bell. Are you sure about that? <laughs> yeah, there's nothing I could say about Huntress. She, she, in my personal, uh, in my personal opinion, uh, her design, what she does, how she goes about with her powers and whatnot, a plus. Other than this, you know, uh, oh, the humming, the humming. Now that I think about it, the humming needs to be tied to her uh, terror radius because of the fact that matter is, you could do stuff to affect her terror radius, but this loud bitch is still humming. <laughs> <laughs> she could be under the effect of insidious tinker or whatever. Bitch is still humming. <laughs> so I, I want her humming to be affected by her terror radius. Um, and then on top of that too, um, I want her to be just a little bit more quiet. Like, you know, her getting ready to throw a hatchet. Not only her getting ready to throw a hatchet starts off with an initial <laughs> but then when it's fully charged, you hear a Beam noise, loud as hell. Even the survivors here, when it's full, it's a full charged hatchet, get ready to be chucked at their skull. They hear this loud ass Sonic the Hedgehog ring chime, and I was like, "Up, oh, time to start ducking and dodging." <laughs> but other than that, though, her humming—I wanted to be tied to her terror radius. But truth be told, because she's a long range killer, sometimes that doesn't even come into the equation. But like I said, all around th that those last things are just nitpicks. Michael Myers. Mm. What can I say about Michael? Michael, his power is outdated. All his add-ons are fine. Especially Tuft of Hair. Tuft of Hair 
makes Michael much more plausible. And what I mean by Michael's uh, power is out of date is what I'm what needs to happen with Michael Myers' power is when he's doing the stalking, what needs to happen with his stalk is once when he hits level three, the survivors that you are stalking need to ha have some kind of pullback on how much you can stalk them. Because if you get to the end game and you've stalked all four survivors to their maximum, uh, guess what Michael Myers turns into? Just a shitty one uh, uh, M1 killer. Uh, just uh, I, all I could do is lunge. I can't even get back into level three when I one shot you. Um, so what needs to happen, in my personal opinion, is once when either they're fully stocked, there's either like a cooldown on like like a like a un, uh, an unseen indicator of how like how much can be stocked on a certain excuse me, and that gets brought back, you know. So that way at end game, if it's a long match. He just doesn't become just a shitty basic killer. I mean, and they, they gave him, his add-outs gave him some different variety of styles of play. Tombstone, tuft of hair, dangerous as fuck. Uh, scratch mirror, not vanity mirror, Ma vanity mirror sucks balls. Scratch mirror makes him, um, what, what they call him, Burger King Myers or Peekaboo Myers. Uh, yeah, uh, all his, uh, the, the memorial, the journal, dead, even dead rabbit. I, I have a build that I personally called Scream for Daddy. Or because they have this um, meme going on with Michael Myers, where he has uh, his his um, his boiler suit is like exposing his chest, and it's called "Scream for Me, Daddy." And um, you use this with tuft of hair and infectious fright, with you know uh, probably like terrifying presence as well to make your terror radius a little bit bigger, make your terror radius as big as possible. So when you hit a survivor with that good old tuft of hair one shot, you see where the other survivors are. You get that scream. So that's why I call it Scream for Me Daddy. <laughs> but Michael Myers, I just his his end game is weak as hell. Um You know, and if you're going up against good survivors that know how to loop, know how to waste the killer's time and all that good stuff, yeah, Michael Myers' power is total ass at the end. Make it to where um he could do his power again at the end of a match. But uh he got reworked recently too. But uh Bubba with his little chainsaw temper tantrum. Now he has tokens, all bullshit. Ugh. Um, you know, I, 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 me personally, when it comes to hitting survivors for one shot, I want it to be some kind of skill involved. We just saw that I did a, a match with Bubba, and I'm chasing down survivors, but they are way faster than me, or just as fast as me, to where I can't catch them. But, you know, Baba, uh, his weakness comes in those tantrums if you dodge him correctly, the hitbox on that chainsaw. Yeah. Um, yeah. For all what Bubba is based on, what he can do and what he represents, I don't think there's much you can do to change him from the rework other than just being, you know, a crazy asshole with the chainsaw. His, his He didn't even have, I don't even think he had red uh, add-ons before the work uh, rework. Tuberator, carburetor tuning guy. Tuberator. Ooh, my brain is fried right now. But, yeah, like, yeah, for what it's worth, I don't see what they could do to make him better based on his motif. I think what they did was actually pretty good with Bubba, with the cannibal, with Leatherface, whatever the fuck you want to call him. Moving on. Freddy, he got reworked, too. When he first came out, he was the worst. He was worse than what Clown, and it was rightfully so. He was a killer to where his power... You couldn't even hit them <laughs> unless you hit them with your power, which is like you put them in the dream state. You couldn't even touch them. Um, you, you shoot like a little skull beam out, made them go to sleep, and then you could hit them. But even if you hit them with the beam, the sleep wasn't instantaneous. It took a minute or two. So, yeah. Uh, but his rework, he's like one of the – he's in the top tier of killers right now. You, uh, you There was a content creator who did a video where they put – no add-ons on him, no perks, except I think the add-on they used made his power significantly worse, uh, which, like, it said, like, yeah, gain extra 200 blood points if tr uh, survivors trigger the Dream Snare, uh, decreases, considerably decreases the Dream Snare speed penalty for survivors, which, when you look at it, it meant that nothing happened when they stepped on it. So, he did the, he did a match, he did a couple matches, with just using this that made his power worse 
and Freddy still came out with 4K. And that's because, as I mentioned earlier, Freddy is one of the fastest killers early game. End game, he slows down significantly. And why is that? He has the ability to teleport to generators, to generators, to generators. On top of that, too, he lays down. Pallet Freddy is not bad, but Dream Snare Freddy is much more of a threat. Because, say, for instance, you're chasing a survivor. They slam a pallet down. And then, you know, go off and do something else and they come back to this area. But wait a minute. I remember I slammed this pallet down and with my survivor friends, none of us are running. Uh, what is the, there's the park that resets pallets. Why is this pallet back up? Oh, that must be a dream pallet because we're going up against Freddy. <laughs> useless. Well, I won't say useless, but dream, dream pallet Freddy is not that big of a threat. Dream snare Freddy is. So... He got reworked. He's actually really good. I have nothing to complain about him. Everything that they've done with uh, Freddy's rework is a welcome change. The pig, um, I don't like the fact that her masks can be disabled on first try. I would like it to have more, I, I, as far as when the traps activate, that the fact you can escape, uh, that you can't escape the match with an activated trap unless it's the hatch. Um, what else? The, the they've changed a few. They tweaked her here and there, but ultimately, what I wanted to be, I wanted to be a progress bar. I don't want. I do not like RNG. And what needs to happen is, I would like for it to be you work to a progression of removing the trap. Like you know, say for instance, there there's multiple locks on the back of the bear trap, the reverse bear trap, or what is it called? Um, Jigsaw's baptism. There's multiple locks. It, every jigsaw box has the key. You just got to get the key out of it. So you work to doing three, four, you know, jigsaw boxes. And then the, um, you know, mask comes off. The baptism comes off. The reverse tra bear trap. The trap comes off, goddammit. Can't speak. Getting tired. Getting hungry. But, yeah, I do not like RNG in games based on skill. I do not. I, I fucking hate it. It is one of the worst things you can do to a video game. Uh, developers will swear up and down. RNG makes games have, you know, this balance of will it or won't it, and it makes it more exciting. No, it makes it more fucking annoying. Don't do that, developers. So, for her, that's what I would say is that, you know, make it to where the, the pig's add-ons determine how many uh, attempts it will take to uh, get the, the uh, mask off. The ones that affect the time... Totally fine with it. The ones that affect the skill checks, totally fine with that. But yeah, let the skill checks affect how much of the progression of this bar goes. So that way it's not just I go to the first bar, oh look, boop, the mask is off, my power the power is useless now because I got it off in the first try. <coughs> and also and also too, let it be like, you know let her be a bigger threat by her traps. Uh, regenerate like off of a uh, what, what game is that? It's Rainbow Six Siege. There's a uh, an operator in Rainbow Six Siege. He throws down these traps that are like needles, and after a certain time has passed, he regens these needles. Like that's what should happen with Pig. The Pig should start off with four traps, or hell, have her start off with one trap because she can only uh, get survivors down so fast. But by the time she gets down two survivors, there'll be another trap. Have that have like a regen thing. So that way, like towards the end, and then when the end game collapse happens, now nah, that would be too overpowered if the end game collapse happens, even if the gen is done. Um Yeah, no, that would be too powerful. Now nah. or or no, not end game collapse. We have the um traps also activate when the doors are open. Not just because it's an end game collapse. But because the door got open as well, too, have the traps activate even on that. That would make her a little bit more of a threat, too. And make him, make survivors have to sweat more finding these jigsaw boxes and getting it off. But, you know, for the most part, Pig is okay, but that, that's what I would change about her. Just to get rid of the RNG aspect in a game of skill. Let the skill checks determine how fast you get your box or your trap off. And, you know, have it to be to where it's a progression bar that fills up. And you go to, you know, another, um, what you call it? Another jigsaw box. The clown, he's getting reworked. Not much I can say. I thought he was good. I thought he was one of the best killers in the game just because of this add-on alone. Pinky's finger, 
uh, Redhead Peaky's finger made him even much more, you know, OP. He was a, he is a good killer, and they're making him better. Nothing I can say about it. We'll see what happens when he comes up. A lot of people bitched and complained about the whole uh, antidote bottles that he throws now also affecting survivors. But in the hands of a good killer, who the hell cares? <laughs> in the hands of a good killer, this fat bass is going to be hauling ass at you and there's nothing you can do about it. Spirit. She's been tweaked to where her add-ons have been changed but not her power itself. What needs to happen with her... And she is considered S tier. She is up there with Nurse. But she doesn't break the rules. She just makes it a pain in the ass to deal with when her power activates. What needs to happen is there needs to be a much more solid indicator, visual indicator, that she's in her power. Because I, there's been a few times where I stand at a pallet. Uh, so I'm chasing survivor. Survivor drops the pallet. I stand at the pallet. Don't move. Don't do anything. For like two seconds, and they slide across the pallet right into my arms because they believe that I activated my power. Because there's no indicator. And if you're running, I think it's prayer beads. Um. So yeah, Phasey, this reverses her power. Normally her power is, if you're inside her terror radius, you hear the, the sound of it when she's activating her power. It's like a wishing sound. But this reverses it. If you're outside of it, you hear it. And if you're in it, you don't hear it. <laughs> and then I'm missing the ring. She has a ring, too, that, uh, like, doubles her... I mean, she's already fast when she goes invisible. But the ring even, like, doubles that. It was like, uh, but she can't see scratch marks. But if you partner it up with Father's Glasses, she's... She's like Sonic the Hedgehog speed, and she can see your blood. So, yeah, she, and then partner that up with Ran, uh, not Rancor, with Strider. <coughs> Oof. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I would say just make it more obvious when she is and is not going into her power. But other than her design, uh, there's a reason why she's S tier. Because uh, you don't know, even if she does activate her power, is she standing still? Is she going to the left? Is she going to the right? W where is she coming from when she uses her power? So, you know, I, there's not much I can say about her because uh, she's good and she is a threat. I don't play her that much because of that fact. Legion! Oh my god, they've hurt her. They've hurt them so badly with their redesign. Legion, uh, initially, when Legion first came out in their first year of release, they were S tier. And what it was is because of the fact that uh, their ability of... Uh, Frenzy Strike, Feral Frenzy Strike, or whatever the hell it's called. What's it called? It's Feral Frenzy, the Feral Slash. Used to be able to down people. Used to be able to affect how long they had until the Mend Bar would kill them. Or knock them down, not kill them. But um, they got rid of that. They also affected how long the uh, recovery was. With cold dirt, cold dirt used to like cut the stun down from coming out of your power like in half. Um, yeah, they did Legion dirty. Legion's still a threat. Don't get me wrong. Legion is still a badass, balanced, fast, a threat, powerful. People don't like to see them coming. The fact that you know, if you pick the one of the girls, she she looks like a survivor, so she kind of has that. You know, approach of being like, uh, unless you you pick the uh, the most recent Legion that came out with the neon green. <laughs> but if you like me, if you pick like the Susie with, you know, a, a very dark mask, they they think you're one of the survivors, and like, oh shit, where's the killer at? Oh wait, that is the killer. Nothing I can say about Legion other than they did hurt, they did them wrong, they did Legion wrong. Play, don't like her. Just recently got into her, giggity. But, um, uh, the, the way how her power works, they've tweaked it a bit. The way how, you know, I, I, when she first came out, she kind of was a big threat because the progression of her, of the vomit that she would hit you with was so fast. <laughs> a chase could be over within 10 seconds if, you know, she hugged you. If, you know, she got close to you, vomited on your face, you instantly went into the, like, the one shot broken status. Um, 
yeah, she she was a monster in the beginning, but then they kind of nerfed her, but tweaked her at the same time to where it wasn't so busted. So I I don't really like her. Her play style is okay. Uh, it gets kind of wonky with the vomit, the red vomit, the not not so much the green vomit, but the red vomit. There's been times when I've like done the sweep and the vomit goes straight through the survivor, and I was like, okay, um, why did that not work? <laughs> Nothing I can say about her. Her add-ons make total sense. Uh, you know, if they're vomiting, you see them. Uh, you're faster. Hold on. You moderately decrease movement speed while holding crap pressure. Uh, but, but make your, you know, the most dangerous form of her faster. When they say holding, do they mean holding for vomiting? <laughs> Ghostface. Don't do anything to Ghostface. I mean, his add-ons could use some more mix-up variety. Because right now, the only useful ones for him are Pen and Book. Adger's Book. That makes his power come back in, like, less than 30 seconds, I think, if I remember correctly. Just makes his power be able to use more frequently. And his power is totally legit. It's like if you took the Wraith and merged it in with Michael Myers. And, like, with, with, my, with him. He stalks the survivor, gets them exposed. He can one-shot them, but he can keep doing it over and over and over again. Whereas Michael, he runs out of gas endgame. Yeah, other than his add-ons uh, could be use some more variety. Like, truthfully, like the one where tremendously increased the rate of survivors become Mark Molina from cover, it's not that big of a deal. Like, if you did it without the add-on, it's like three seconds. If you did it with this add-on, it's like two seconds, a second and a half. Something stupid like that. Yeah, it's not that big of a deal. So Ghostface, that's why I like him. This is why he's in the classic movie outfit. Maybe with a different knife, I think. I don't think he has a regular knife. But yeah, Ghostface is good. This fucker. Demogorgon. Truth be told, Demogorgon is the layout for what I desire in this game. I want a fucking werewolf creature. A beast creature. I'm... One of the tiffs that I have about this game is that there's too many psychopathic killers in this game. Psychopath killers in this game. There's not enough supernatural killers in this game. Demogorgon falls into the supernatural category. And uh, I can make it. I think I'm debating on making a video based on it. But, like, his best add ons. Hold on. His best add ons are brown. The rat tail and rat liver make him. Oof. So. Oh, he's a nightmare to deal with when he has on those two brown add-ons. His red add-ons, let's see, reveal the auras of all of your survivors while you're in the upside down. But then when I come out the upside down, how long is it revealed for? It's fucking useless to me then. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it might help me give, an, uh, give me an idea of what direction I need to go into. But say if I traverse the upside down and I pass up an aura uh, while I'm doing the traverse... By the time I get to where I saw that, they're not, where are they now? Where do I have to go off of them? No. What it should be, when you come out of the Upside Down, all auras are revealed with you within a certain range for X amount of seconds. That makes more sense. And then that would make it partnered up with Red Moss that much more dangerous. When you come out of the Upside Down, you're undetectable for a long amount of time, and the, the ability to use the portals comes back faster. Yeah, so other than his add-ons, um, him being able to, to lunge, to teleport, he's like one of the few killers that has like nine powers or some bullshit. Let's see, what does he have? So yeah, he has the abyss. Hold it. Uh, also, I was close to the proximity of a portal. So yeah, you get the, the killer's instinct if you are charging your lunge. You have the lunge, and you have the teleport. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, so he has three powers. The ability to sense people near portals, the ability to use said portals, and the ability to lunge. <laughs> like, the, the, the shred attack. Oh. <laughs> That's why Rat Liver, or Rat Tail, one of the two, makes the lunge so much more dangerous. What's up? Okay, I'm almost done with this. Let's see what else we have. We have the Oni. He's relatively new, so he's catered to how the game plays now. Sucks up blood, gets pissed off, and smashes people's face in, rips their tongues out. Love him. Haven't played him that much recently, 
Um, but uh, yeah, the fact that he can one shot when he's angry. God damn, you're loud. <laughs> Uh, but the fact that he one shot survivors when he's pissed off, the more people he injures, that's why Sloppy Butcher is like necessary. He also has an add on that makes him bleed more. I use that already. But and the only thing I have a problem with is that his um the 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 hooking of his um the club swing. What, what's it called? The demon smash or something like that. Uh, demon strike. Yeah, See, I've seen some survive uh, some killers when they use. Oni and they're going for that that big ass club strike. They could do a J turn. I could only dream of because I'm on console, which is the, the 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 benefit of being on mouse and keyboard. You can you could lie to the game pretty hard on how far and how fast you're turning with the DPI input on a mouse. But as far as him as a killer, what he does, how he operates, hell, his red red add on, um, the bloody glove. God tier. Anybody who touches the blood orb, uh, survivors see the blood orbs that you suck up, and if they touch the blood orb that you suck up, you see them regardless of how far away they are. Oh, mm. so that even means when they're trying to heal from sloppy butcher, a blood orb will pop up and touch them when they're trying to heal. Oh, look, you're over there healing, coming for that ass. Yeah, lo love it, love it, love it. But this one, this red add on. Someone did a, a video on it and proved that because of the fact that the animation of you slamming your stick down on the ground takes your camera and shoves it into the ground so hard, you don't even see the screens if they're close by even. Oh, well, yeah, it only works in a 12 meter radius. So, yeah, you slam it down, the camera looks down in the ground, and thus for making this add on shit. Now, if, you did, if the camera did not change, when you were striking with uh with the hammer, then it would be good. But because of that, it's useless. Death Slinger. As Survivor, I fucking hate running into Death Slinger. I hate a long range killer naturally, by default, has one of the smaller terror radiuses in the game. <laughs> He is a ranged character that can sneak up on survivors, partner that up with monitor and abuse, then partner that up with, it's an add-on that does it even too. Is it Cigar? No, I think I used them all up. I used them all up. So if you partner it up with this other purple add-on, when you're aiming down the sights of your gun, your terror radius is decreased even further. He is a ranged killer with no detection. He's a ranged stealth killer. That's why I say with Huntress, for her to be a uh, ranged killer, and regardless of what you do to her terror radius, the bitch is always humming. He's always singing that lullaby. But um, that's what I want to change with the Death Slinger. If you're going to do that to him, not only give him add-ons that affect his terror radius, but then have him also do that... Um, I mean, there's three things that affect his terror radius that makes him a stealth killer, and he's ranged. Now, don't get me wrong. When I'm playing the killer, as you can see, I'm subject to abuse. I'm, I'm, I'm abusing that 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 fun fact. So, um, and then on top of that, too, his uh, some of his add-ons make no sense. Like, if you get a shot when they're like outside, like just outside of your terror radius, they're exposed. Uh, I would like to say cut that in half, make it to where it's like 10 meters away or 8 meters away, not 15 meters away. Well, here I am being a liar now because we all know that, the, like I said, the terror radius is like 32. But most of the survivors, if they're running spine chill, which is really good, oh, which is effective against Deathling, don't get me wrong, but just to know that if a good Deathlinger angles how he approaches a, a generator survivors the spine chill won't work as effectively but Deathslinger, he's relatively new he's catered to how the game is played now not much i would say changing on him except that whole the size of his terror radius bullshit oh executioner they just recently tweaked him He's new. I haven't had much time with him. Love his design. Love his power. Love everything about him. Truth be told. Uh, yeah, I can't really say much about it because he's he's less than a year old. 
His power is, you know, makes sense with what the game is, the speed of the game. Nothing to say about him. Like him. Blight. Oh, they nerfed his ass into oblivion, but he needed to be. Um, the problem that I have with Blight, as a console player, I'm not able to angle his turning effectively while, you know, mouse players have that ability. I believe there is a way to play mouse and keyboard on PS4. I'm not going to. Fuck that. That, does, that defeats the purpose of playing a video game, my personal opinion. But, um, but like, some of his add-ons make total sense. Like, I love Compound 33. Um, what does the Blight Tag do again? Yeah, Lush, Lethal Rush, while using the last Rush token, makes your last hit, like, one-shot survivors. Good. Rushing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Rushing recharges all your tokens. So, yeah, these two together... Dangerous combo, but what they really nerfed was, uh, what was it called? Compound Twenty One. Compound Twenty One used to be you use his power, bump into a wall, and damn near your terror radius would expose everyone near you. Uh, so they they had to, they had to nerf Compound Twenty One. So other than I, I wish that there was more control over his rushing, not to the point to where it's like he's, you know. Like I see some 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 uh, content creators when they video themselves playing the black, they're doing they're put their their mouse input is trying to override so much what the game can intake that the blood starts rushing sideways or if not backwards like moonwalking. I was like, damn dude, you're breaking the game that much with your shitty ass forced input. Ugh. But that's all I would say is just more control over his turning. Um, to where I, I'm much more effective. They 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 did justice by making the hit detection on his uh, rushing much more manageable. But yeah, they nerfed an add-on which made him really good. Uh, but a lot of his other add-ons are just as good. Uh, and the turning, the turning just gets problematic for me because I'm a console player. But uh, Natho, not bad. And here we are at the last killers, the twins. They really really do. And they have one outstanding problem that I have. The frequency at which Victor, the little bastard in her chest, can respawn. <laughs> now, if we're talking about, say, I left Victor on the map and the, in and the timer for Victor runs out and then he respawns into my chest, makes sense. But say, for instance... A survivor kicks the shit out of Victor's little skull. And within two, three seconds, guess where Victor is? He's back, baby! So, Victor's respawn time should be penalized if he's kicked by survivors. That's the only thing I would say. Because in that way, you know, you're given a, a, a chance. Because the, the, at the speed at which Victor respawns makes him able to camp both gates and... Uh, both exit gates at the same time, effectively. There's no way a survivor is getting out during the end game collapse if the uh, the um, gates are even relatively close to each other. Victor's end, um, the twins' end game is god awfully powerful, and their add on some of them make sense minus the speed it takes for um, what's her name Claudette? No, what the fuck. What is her, the twins' name again? It's Victor and Charlotte. The time it takes for Charlotte to wake up to even use, say, the undetectable status or... Well, no, this one makes sense because you could leave her. But, yeah, Charlotte is uh, undetectable for 12 seconds when waking up. If the wake-up animation was a little bit faster or this lasted a little bit longer, I could totally justify it. But the way it stands right now, it's like you have to partner up with, like, there's an add-on, Charlotte wakes up faster. It's, it's it's stupid. It's a waste. So that's my quick rundown of the killers and what needs to be done for 2021 on them. You know, I'll probably break this up and send it to YouTube, and then uh, I'll probably even talk about the perks, how they stand as in 2021, to where it, we don't just keep seeing the same shit and hiring. I'm, that's the one thing that's going to kill this game is that they'll make certain perks so powerful that that's all you ever see. That's what happened with Ruin and they nerfed Ruin into goddamn Oblivion. Still a good perk, but way stronger what it was in year one. So, 
with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this uh, stream and then take care. GG till next time, everyone. Take care.